Today we're reacting to finance TikToks. <coughs> oh my god, financial advice so bad, it made me sick. The advice in the video itself is fairly commendable. Because we all know that the best and most sound financial advice comes from a social media platform made for dancing. I'm a savage. So this ought to be interesting. Enough with the intro, let's get straight into it. What would it take for you to get three billion within six months? I'd take a hundred million that I have and I'd go to a big institution and say, hey, 10X my 100. That'd be a bill. They'll do that 100%. 10X my 100? Let's give them a chance. I take the bill and go buy three billion. A billion dollars for about three or four billion dollars worth of real estate. We could do four billion this year. I don't understand why you're thinking so small. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm curious why you play so small when you have the opportunity. You can do, you just came up with the answer in 10 seconds. Yeah. Why wait? That's why I come here? I, got, I came here from a therapy session today. Thank you, Dr. Phil. <laughs> in the first part, I'd assume he's talking about debt leveraging to go from a hundred million to a billion. But that's not viable in six months. No institution is taking 100 million and turning it into a billion in six months. That's not possible. But does it have something to do with the fact that his course is also called the 10X course? Does it? You tell me. Maybe not. Maybe I'm crazy. I definitely think it does. They both sort of have this weird little exchange of, of happiness and, and that's clearly them just laughing at us because they fed us some bro science bullshit. In the second part where he's somehow gone from a billion to three, four billion. I'd assume he's saying purchase properties which are undervalued and then sell them for their valued price. But it's very rare that you'll be able to find a property that's being sold for a fourth of the price that it's actually worth. So again, those numbers are just ridiculous. Now, in fairness, I have taken a look at SEC filings for some of the companies and firms that he runs, Cardone Capital and Cardone Equity, and the numbers are quite high and revenues and profits are quite high, but nowhere near the three, four billion dollar mark. His videos seem to be an attempt at capitalizing on people's innate desire to be rich in a short space of time. Next. I pay you a thousand dollars. Can we double it in six months? No. How long in 12 months? Okay, no problem. I'll do a double in a, in a year. Here's a thousand dollars. I get a double back, right? So if you take a thousand and you double it every year, what happens? Thousand goes into two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 256, five, two of a million. A thousand dollars is nine doubles away from a million. Wow. Didn't he just say wow? Dude, he's literally telling you doubles and you said wow. Now you take a million and see what happens if we double it nine times. A million is 10 doubles away from a billion. But how do you find the doubles? Well, that's the game. Okay, so the guy in the video, Patrick Back David, he actually has some decent advice in a lot of his videos. This doesn't seem to be one of them. I mean, in this video, all he's doing is saying doubles and he actually missed a double from 64 to 128. So this, from a marketing sense, this, this clip seems to have been purely been made with the intention of generating a clip for short form content. There's no, there's no, there's no financial advice. There's no financial advice in the video at all. So I don't know what, and also what's giving you hundred percent return in 12 months. Tell, tell me about it. Tell, tell me. No, seriously, tell me. Seriously. If you know, tell me. See, that's something you have to bear in mind. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these short form content videos, they may just have been made with the intention of generating heated discussions in the comments. And that's something you definitely have to remember that rage baiting happens a lot in this whole sphere of content. Next. Investing advice for all of the teenagers out there. It really all starts with a decision, whether, you know, you're getting, you know, $50 a week pocket money, you know, you're who's, who's getting $50 a week pocket money. 17 or 18 and you have a little uh, side gig, maybe you have a part-time job, whatever it is, decide how much of your income you're going to put away. Now you might be making $50 a week right now. Control. Control. Will they? Because your parents are getting $50 a week in pocket money. And you might go, you know, if I put $10 away every single week, that's really not going to move the needle that much. You're right. But what happens when you get to a point when you're making $5,000 a week? And that could very much happen for you in your you know, teenage years, maybe even your early 20s, whatever the case may be. And you for four, five, six, seven years have built up the habit of putting, for example, 20% of your income away. So maybe when you're 14 or 15, you're used to putting $10 away per week to invest. And let's say you land a high paying job, or maybe you start your own business. And as I said, you're making $5,000 a week and you are used to putting 20% of that income aside. That's a thousand dollars a week. That's a lot of money to be investing and think about it. Okay. Um, the advice in the video itself is fairly commendable. He's saying, Creating a habit of investing early and setting aside a percentage to invest early on is a, that's a great habit to develop. He's saying 
you should make the conscious decision and decide to invest early. So that's all good. That's all good. Happy with that part. Who's getting $50 a week pocket money and which 21 year old is making $5,000 a week? Which one? Now remember, good investing pays more dividends the longer you do it, not literal dividends, but the longer you do it, the greater advantage you can take of compounding interest and the growth of your capital becomes exponential if we take the S&P 500 as a barometer. So the essence of the video, the message is trying to get across is pretty good. Set aside a percentage that will create a habit. Then regardless of how much you're earning, you'll always be used to setting aside that percentage for investing. Fine. Who's getting $50 a week pocket money? I want to meet those people. Who is it? Who? $50 a week. I used to get one pound. One pound a week. <sighs> Next. Here are two ways you can use AI to generate over $3,000 per month at home as a team. With 2023 being the year of artificial intelligence, here are the simplest ways you can use it to your advantage. The first way you can make money is by creating AI generated YouTube videos. All you need to do is go to mid journey and generate a prompt for that specific video that you want to post on YouTube. It could literally be anything that you want it to be. All you have to do after writing that prompt is click one button and boom, you got your video. Then you can use AI to generate a thumbnail for you and your next and final step will literally just be posting it on YouTube. Now, I can't tear this YouTube business plan apart because it would mean that I need to do more research into it. But mid journey, especially on the video side, I've seen it used to embellish or make videos that have been already been made by humans better. It's been used to make them better. I don't know how viable it is to create content from scratch. You'd need some pretty good prompts. You need some uh, pretty good understanding of um, large language model prompts and how to best utilize its ability. But for thumbnails and stuff, absolutely. AI is great for that. Also, $3,000 is not exactly a short-term business plan on YouTube. That would take a while for you to get to $3,000 a month consistently on YouTube. So I would temper expectations. Otherwise, mid-journey and all these AI tools are great to play around with. That was more of a serious, uh, that was a much more level-headed TikTok than the ones we had before. Next. If you are broke, you should not be investing in stocks and real estate. Stocks and real estate is the slowest way to get rich unless you are trading or flipping houses. But if you are working a job and you're trying to find a way to get rich, investing in stocks and real estate will never do it for you because it's going to be way too slow and you're not going to get rich until you're 40. You need to be investing your money into learning skills that will help you make more money. Because once you start to make 100 grand a year or 200 grand a year, then you can start to invest in stocks and real estate. And that's when you'll start to see some returns that you could live off of. Again, that's not a bad video. I would agree and disagree. Like we mentioned before, creating a habit of investing early is definitely a good thing to do. It doesn't make sense to only start investing when you're earning 100, 200K a year because the average salary in the US is $74,000. So that means that the average person, if, if we go by this advice, they would never invest. I think everyone should invest regardless of whether you're making 10 pound a month, 10 pound a week, even if it's just to create the habit of investing. However, if you're in a job where the growth opportunity or the opportunity for progression isn't there and you're not really developing a skill set, then in some cases, investing in yourself to increase your market value is often better than investing in stocks and shares and companies and indices. In some cases, I would say a bit of both, definitely. If you're stuck somewhere, definitely invest in yourself to increase market value, increase your market value. It's difficult to create the habit when you're earning so much. So also make sure you set aside something, regardless of how much you're earning, to invest, create good habits. Again, that was a surprisingly level-headed TikTok. I like it. Next. How many people can you call up and be like, yo, can you wire me a million? I'll send you, I'll, I, I'm good for it. Oh, you don't have those friends? I do. So I can tell you it's real. Oh no, there's no way that that's because you're a peasant. You don't understand these things. And in, in due time, shut the be quiet. Think more than four seconds before you speak. Don't be reactive, be proactive. Listen, maybe I'm not wasting my time here. Maybe I'm trying to teach you something that's good for you. I don't like that guy. The most successful people I've met the CEOs and company owners and startup 
businessmen who, who arrive in helicopters to the meetings that we have, they tend not to insult people to prop up their own ego. In fact, they tend to be the nicest people because they have nothing to be mad about. I don't know what he's talking about. He's, I guarantee you what, he doesn't have friends who can wire him a million. Guarantee you that. Because those veneers don't say I'm good for a million dollars. Those veneers say I went to Turkey and paid two and a half thousand euros for them. That's what they say. Don't like his veneers. So veneers are meant to be a natural color, not next. Oh, not this guy again. If I made 400 grand a year, I would be embarrassed with myself as a husband, a father, basically as a human being. You guys haven't done the math because you cannot live on 400 grand a year. And if you think you can live on 400 grand a year. Yes, you can. The average US salary for a family with two kids is $74,000. I might have to go back and add number one, nothing. Anybody can make 400 grand a year. All you gotta do is show up. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. You guys don't need to agree with me. I've already been paid my fee. I am not here to satisfy you. I don't care if you like me or not, man. I wanna move a handful of people in the room to go from 400 grand a year to start thinking about how do I make 4 million? Big boy right over here. What'd you make last year? 2.7. How does anybody live on 2.7 million dollars a year? My plane eats 2.7 million dollars a year. This dude needs to think different. Let me show you how. Give me 2.7 million dollars a year and I'll show you how to live. I'll show you. I'll do that. I will be the case study for how to live on 2.7 million dollars a year. I volunteer as tribute. How does that sound? That sound good? Sounds good to me. Okay, now I get the audience he's speaking to he likely wants them to the audience he's speaking to has a lot to do with the numbers he's throwing out maybe they're entrepreneurs and they're earning a lot of money sure that's understandable but what he's also really good at is marketing so he's pushing everyone to buy his course please bear that in mind don't let anyone make you feel bad about how much you earn <coughs> oh my god financial advice so bad it's made me sick next but buy 10 rental houses before you're 30 years old. If you can buy 10 rental houses before you're 30. If everyone had the opportunity to buy 10 rental houses before the age of 30, he's saying that as though we don't know the value of real estate. Of course we know the value. I just can't afford 10 rental houses before the age of 30. And you own those 10 rental houses at the age of 30. And you don't buy another piece of real estate for the next 25 years. When you're 55, more than likely, all of those properties are going to be paid for. And if, let's just say you still have a balance on all 10 because you put them on 30-year notes, you can sell off more than likely two or three and pay the rest off. So now you're sitting there with seven homes paid for that you have tenants in and you have cash flow coming in every month. So think about that. If you literally had seven rental properties making you $2,000 a month, that's $14,000 a month. That's called financial freedom. There has to be some sort of disconnect between this older generation who were able to buy property when it was affordable and us. Of course, I know the value of real estate. I'm an analyst, I work in finance. I know how stable it is. I know how much it grows. It's a great investment. Where do I get the capital to purchase those 10 rental properties before I'm 30? Where? Other than that, the financially, he's right. If you were somehow able to buy 10 rental houses before the age of 30, You'd technically never have to work again. If you were to sell, even if you were to sell four of them, three or four of them, you'd have cash assets and you can you can invest that money in something else. And then you have uh, rental income coming in from uh, the ones you have tenants in. Sure, financially, absolutely fine, right. It's not really financial advice. And the tone he starts off with is a sort of condescending tone. Like, do you know how valuable real estate is? And I don't understand that. I don't understand that tone. I don't get it. Next. Here are three money, money tips for teens. teens. Number one. Get a side hustle. You gotta do things that you're passionate about. If you like shoes, go sell shoes. If you like cars, go watch cars. If you like baseball, go be a coach. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I would definitely say if you're young, get a side hustle in something. And people tend to, they tend to overcomplicate side hustles or, or, or part-time jobs. Do something you're passionate about. When I was 16, I worked in a suit store, Moss Brothers. I like clothes. I know a lot about clothes. So I was selling clothes too. Lots of rich people. I even met a fairly prominent MP when I was doing that, a member of parliament. That was a great experience. Let's see what else they have to say. Number two, be mindful in your spending. As you make more money from your side hustle, it doesn't mean since you make more money, you should spend more money. Yeah, that's called lifestyle inflation. And that's definitely something that a lot of people deal with. I've dealt with it personally. I mean, when you start to earn more money, there is the inclination to try and keep up with the people who are also earning more money. It's fine to indulge a little bit, enjoy yourself a little bit, but there is a point where you have to say stop when you're on 
the Mercedes website and you're going to purchase a black C63 AMG. Let's see the next point. Let's see the last point. Number three, save you money early. As you're making money on your side hustles, you should start an investment fund early since you have no bills to pay. Again, great point. Like we've been saying throughout this whole video, investing early, creating a habit of investing early is definitely a great, great habit to develop. I can't really be mad about any of those three points. Those are great points. And there you have. Now look, now look, I have to make it clear that a lot of these financial get rich quick gurus that you see online, they make really rage baity and click baity content and they throw out numbers that sound really, really enticing. The fact is, more often than not, they're not being entirely truthful. And I can almost guarantee that they have a course or membership to a program that they're selling. And they do a really, really good job of convincing lazy, ambitious people that they can get rich quick too. So they're really, really good at marketing, but they often lack the substance that proves their expertise. Making good money is hardly as easy as some people describe. And that's really, that's a really key marketing strategy that they use. They try and make it look as though it's so easy to make money. It's not. If it was easy, then everyone would be rich. Social media makes it really easy for people to act like they are. And I would say, do your research into any endeavor that you want to undertake. Do your research into any investment that you want to make and do your research into every single person that you want to take advice from. As a general rule of thumb, if it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. That's all for this episode of Analyst Reacts to Finance TikToks. Check out some of my other videos. I reacted to The Wolf of Wall Street recently. Check that video out if that's something that would interest you. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you guys in the next one.